Hello, this is going to be the first in a set of videos that looks at how to print to text files um, or write to text files in Java. This is one of many approaches and I do encourage you to explore other ways to write to, te write to text files because the more you research and the more you play around, the better programmer you'll become. So to do this, we're going to use three classes. We're going to use the file class, we're going to use what's called a file writer class, and we're going to use a print writer class. So the first thing we need to do is we need to... Hello. In this video, we're going to look at one way to write to a text file in Java. There's lots of ways to do this, and so I encourage you to do a little reading on your own as well. Um, lots of great resources out there. In addition to this video, there's a couple other example videos as well as one that goes through a PowerPoint presentation, which kind of gets into the nuts and bolts a bit more. So, to do this, we're going to use three classes. We're going to use the file class, the print writer class, and the print writer class. Really important, you know how to go out and find the documentation on these, and you go out and try and use it. Um, really good programmers are, are good at finding what they need, and everything that you need is in that API documentation. So, I've already preloaded them here. You can find them simply by doing a Google search for the name of the class space Java. You might get Java 7, you might get Java 8, it really doesn't matter. Um, I believe for these classes. Though it's always good to read the API for the Java that you're working in. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a file object. Now, the nice thing about this technique that we're doing um, is that it, if the file doesn't exist, it will automatically be generated. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to create a file writer object. In the file writer object, the constructor takes a file object. So we've here we've created a file object called file. Here we've created a file writer object called FW. And then we cre create a print writer object. and we pass it our file writer. So here we've created print writer object called PW. Now you're going to notice that you might have some errors and so these three classes are not located in the default uh, Java resource package, the java.lang, so you have to import them. Once you've imported all three classes, you will still possibly have an error here. We'll talk about that in one second. So this is the import statement up here. Um, remember, in your documentation, it always tells you right there what package it's part of. So if I wanted to import all of these with one import line, I could do this. I could write import Java. Let's try this again when everything isn't covered up. Let's import java.io.star. If I do this, I'm going to import all the classes that are within the Java IO resource package. So the problem here is actually that the file writer constructor might throw an exception and we haven't handled it in our program. Remember, there's two ways that we can deal with an exception. We can either have a method throw it out, so we throw an exception, or we can use a try catch. In this example, I'm going to use a um, I'm going to have, actually have the method throw the exception away. And the reason why is because I'm only working in one method and it's easy to do that. If you have multiple methods that are calling each other, throwing an exception is a little more challenging because you have to keep throwing it until someone handles it. Now that you might not understand that explanation here and if you are curious about that, I do suggest you look at the PowerPoint presentation. So it's again, it's good to look at the documentation and be able to find what type of um, exceptions might get thrown. So if we go to the file writer class, the constructor in the file writer class is what's causing the error. So if we scroll down here, and we're using this constructor here, and I know that because it takes a file object, so I click, and there it is right there. This tells me that it throws an I.O. exception, so I have, to, I have to tell the computer what to do with it. So Eclipse is nice because I can click on this and it will actually fix it for me, so I can either add throw declaration or surround with try catch. We're going to throw it, 
And there it is right there. It throws the I.O. exception for us. We're 99% of the way there. We're perfectly set up now. So the way you actually print to a file now is, is almost identical to the way that you would write to the screen. So we're going to use our print writer object. And we just go PW dot print line. Line one, PW dot print line. Line two, PW dot print line. Line three. So I'm going to run this, and this isn't right yet, but essentially what this will do is this will write to the file writer line one, and then line two, and then line three, and each time put an enter at the end. So it's going to be three different lines. And if I run this, it's going to run. I can come here and press F5. There's my file out.txt. So remember, when you run it, if your file is not showing up in your project, select your project and refresh it by pressing F5. If we click on it one, nothing's in it. Now, I don't want you to be in this situation, but it might happen where you are trying to fix your code for hours and you just can't get it to work, and it looks perfect. And the problem is simply that you just haven't closed the file. It's important to understand that when you write to files, it, it's kind of a two-stage process. You don't actually write directly to the file. You write to the file writer, um, and then once you've written to the file writer, you copy all of that to the file in one chunk. When you close the print writer, that is the indicator saying, OK, I want you to copy the file writer information now into my text file. So now if I run this, and I click into my out.txt, there's line one, line two, line three. Oh, wrong one. I really I want to highlight the point here that you don't have to create the file. I can make a file called out1.txt. It doesn't exist currently. And if I run this, it won't show up. But if I click on my project and refresh it, it will populate and it automatically creates the file. If for some reason that you the file does exist already, and I run this. It's going to actually, the way we have this set up, it will overwrite the file. So we're writing to out1.txt, and notice it's wiped everything out. So the last thing I want to kind of do in this, this little PowerPoint presentation is say, what happens if I just want to add to the file? I don't want to wipe it out. Now, there's lots of interesting things you could do. You could read all the information and then write all the information back. But it turns out there's a really simple way to append to a file. We append the file by changing the constructor that we use to create the file writer. So if we jump out to our documentation, we go to the file writer class, you'll notice that there's a second constructor that takes a file and a boolean. This boolean, if you set it to true, it will just append the file. If you set it to false, it will wipe it out each time. So now if we come back into here and I keep my code almost exactly the same but add true here, and let's go into out.1.txt and let's delete everything, right? We'll save it and come back into my file and let's run it. And sure enough, prints line A, B, and C. If I come back here and I run it again, because this parameter here is set to true and I run it, it's actually just going to append to the file. So if I come in here, look at this. Line A, B, C, line A, B, C. If I run it again, it's going to add to it again. So, there's a really straightforward way to print to files. I hope this video helped. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how you might write a method that does this, and it's going to make it a little bit more of a useful tool because you can access it from anywhere. I hope this video helped.